Our second guest of the morning is another Republican looking to fill the seat in the nation's capital held by Congressman Jimmy Duncan. Since 1988, Jason Emmer grew up in Blunt County. He earned both an MBA and a law degree, ran and lost a tight race by some 28 votes in 2014 to current state rep Eddie Smith in Knox County. Jason, nice to have you. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, John. Let's talk about why you're running. Well, I'm running because I think we're in a great shift right now in our country's history. As you can see, a lot of people are leaving Congress, and I think it's up to a new generation to come in and take hold of what, what's happened in D.C. You know, some of the biggest issues that we hear about in the campaign trails, we have a $21 trillion deficit, and that's that's something that we uh, that we can't pay down uh, anytime soon. We have a, it's a national security issue, and really no one talks about it. Secondly, you know, we have to wrap our heads, uh, our hands around what's going on with immigration. Uh, our national security, we need to rebuild the military and have a strong force across the world. Uh, and thirdly, we have a broken health care system that, that has disproportionately affected rural communities, especially in the 2nd Congressional District. The, the very first thing you mentioned was the debt. Yeah. And, and it's a huge problem it for is. America. And I would ask you the same question I asked before. The, the federal budget, President Trump's budget, which passed Congress mm -hmm. overwhelmingly, reduced income and increased spending. Would you support that? I wouldn't have supported that, and I agree with what President Trump said. This is the one-time thing he was going to do because he felt like at the time it was right for the country. But going forward, I agree with President Trump that we cannot continue to kick the can down the road. Do you believe him? Absolutely, I believe him. I mean, that's why I'm running. I, I have the fortunate to, I mean, to be the I mean, do you believe that when he said this is a one-time thing, after he said it wasn't going to be a one-time thing, do you believe the next time He'll hold his word, Jason. Yes, absolutely. I mean, he has made campaign promises. He's kept his campaign promises. We have an economy that's coming back. There's just a study out that we're back to being the top competitive nation in the world. So absolutely, I trust when President, when President Trump makes a promise, he's kept a promise. So Mexico will be paying for the wall any day now? Mexico will be paying for the wall. I think over time you have what he's laid out last night in uh, his or this Seriously, week. Seriously, you think Mexico is going to pay for the wall? There, there's not going to be a big check that we're going to get in Washington, D.C. with the president of Mexico that hands it over and says, here's the, the payment for the wall. But I, I do agree with President Trump and what he says, that over time it will be paid for. And, and I firmly By believe... By withholding aid to Mexico? We're not going to withhold aid to Mexico. We, we don't really give Mexico that much aid. It's about $80 million, $80 million in aid, uh, but through different, you know, we, have, we renegotiate NAFTA, obviously putting the wall first and foremost, has to be a part of that renegotiated NAFTA. If we don't secure the border, then we don't have a country. We have to have a solid border. We have to patrol it, and we have to secure the country. Because if we don't believe in our border, then we don't believe in our country. And most experts will tell you that a physical wall will do little to nothing to stop any illegal immigration across the Mexican-South U.S. border. Well, maybe Democrat experts that you would subscribe no, to, Don, and I, no, I don't subscribe I, I to think, that at all. I, I think security experts that are part nonpartisan in that. I, we can debate this forever. <laughs> Absolutely, Let's, but I disagree yeah. with you. You also mentioned health care, yeah. um, and lots of people have talked about a fix. We talked with Senator Alexander on this mm -hmm. broadcast uh, not earlier this month about his effort to forge some kind of compromise. What would you see as a solution to the health care crisis? Look, I, I think what we have done is we have disproportionately affected rural communities. You, you see rural communities, hospitals that are closing. You see people who need the care the most having to travel the furthest to get access to care. You have doctors that are burned out. You have uh, emergency rooms that are swollen. You, know, you have all sorts of problems that have been created from Obamacare. And, and I don't think a compromise that the Democrats want are gonna, is going to go far enough. So we've got to fundamentally readjust how our health care system works. And that's giving priority back to where it belongs, and that's the patient-doctor relationship. That would be priority number one of anything that I want to set forth in Congress, is putting the patient first in that doctor relationship. That doesn't fix the economics. How are you going to fix the economics? Of well, of course it gets to fix the economics, because you take insurance companies that are having the control within that relationship. Right now, insurance companies have the largest amount of control in that relationship. And that's why I say we have to get it back into that hospital, into that doctor's office with the patient and with the physician. So how do you so, co control costs in a model like that? Well, what you do, so for example, is like we had a, a, a medical device distributorship. And so there was all sorts of issues that we would face where we would bill on, on a set to make easy math, because I'm an attorney, we're bad at math. And you have a $20,000 set that we're selling to the hospital. Uh, insurance is billing or the hospital is billing the patient $100,000 and the insurance is reimbursing at $60,000. That's one example. There's no communication between what we're doing our device in, what the doctors communicating to the hospitals and what the hospitals in turn around and communicating Sounds to the Sounds like insurance. a problem that gets fixed very easily with single 
third-party payee. Of course it does. What you have to do is have a market economy where you can have insurance companies that compete across state lines. For example, we've gone through this, this ProNova and Proton therapy treatment issue in Tennessee. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield currently doesn't cover it in Tennessee. Now, I know that doesn't cover what the governor was going at, uh, but in Florida they do. So Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida somehow has valued a life in Florida more than how they value a life in Tennessee. And I think that's just wrong. And I think any bill that you're going to have to reduce cost on has to address the insurance companies and how they have fundamentally shifted the power out of the doctor's office and into the insurance. So in government, you think government should take some of the power away from insurance companies? They should have the opportunity, you know, you, you break down barriers of, so you provide more opportunities. What government doesn't create jobs, government doesn't protect industry. What government does is provide the opportunity. Right now, the free market has no opportunity to succeed in the healthcare market. And so what I'm saying is you allow insurance companies to compete across state lines and lower the cost on insurance companies. We'll dive into more issues with Jason Emmert, who'd like to be the next congressman from the 2nd District. We're back right after this on Inside Tennessee.